human rights situation in Myanmar has deteriorated significantly, as the far-reaching impacts of, this, uh, of the military coup continue to devastate lives and hopes across the country. Conflict, poverty, and the effects of the pandemics are sharply increasing, and the country faces a vortex of repression, violence, and economic collapse. Over 1,100 individuals have reportedly now died at the hands of the security forces since the coup. Over 8,000 individuals, including children, have been arrested since the coup, with over 4,700 remaining in detention. Most are held without any form of due process and lack access to legal counsel, or even the ability to communicate with their families. We continue to receive reports from multiple locations of interrogation techniques that amount to ill treatment and torture, and have credible information that more than 120 detainees have died in custody, some within 24 hours of their arrest. Report A slash HRC slash 48 slash 667, which is before you today, documents many serious violations of human rights and international humanitarian law, including violations of the rights to life, liberty, and security of person, the, prohi the prohibition against torture, fair trial guarantees, freedom of expression, and freedom of peaceful assembly. Several of these violations may amount to crimes against humanity committed as part of a widespread or systematic attack against the civilian population, or to the extent arising in armed conflict war crimes. Faced with this overwhelming repression of fundamental rights, a movement of armed resistance is growing alongside the peaceful protests that have taken place for seven months. Local self-defense groups have taken arms and many have joined a growing so-called defense force movement. The army has launched uh, offensives and reprisal raids against villages perceived to be the basis of people's defense forces or ethnic armed groups, including artillery barrages and airstrike against civilian areas. Hundreds of individuals have been killed and injured, and many have been forcibly displaced amid escalating humanitarian needs for food, water, shelter, and medical care. I appeal once again to all armed actors to respect human rights and ensure that civilians and civilian structures are protected. Use of airstrikes and artillery in residential areas and any form of military operation that targets health centers, places of worship, schools, or other protected structures must immediately cease. Excellencies, these disturbing trends suggest the alarming possibility of an escalating civil war. It is crucial that the perpetrator of the most serious international crimes, including potentially genocide, are duly held to account. In this regard, the expanded work of the Independent Investigative Mechanism for Myanmar, with its ongoing mandate over current events, has become even more important. Steps taken by the democratic opposition to engage the International Criminal Court and other bodies may also open new avenues for accountability. I also hope that many more military personnel will grasp that their own future will not be served by following unlawful orders to commit international crimes.